Today's lesson is about proportions and equivalent ratios, with your standards being to recognize and represent proportional relationships between quantities, and to decide whether two quantities are in a proportional relationship by testing for equivalent ratios in a table. So you should have your foldable um, already pasted towards kind of the bottom of your page, and that's because we're going to draw an information table first. So if I were you, maybe grab a ruler or a straight edge, and we're going to start by identifying the characteristics of a ratio table. And I'm going to type the characteristics, but of course you should write them down as you um, continue throughout your notes. So you might want to take just a minute and create a small box at the top of your page and insert numbers 1 through 6. The first characteristic of a ratio table is that there are two or more rows and two or more columns. What this tells us is that we need at least two items to compare in order to have a ratio. Second, the rows are labeled. And they're labeled with names um, that indicate the meaning of the numbers. If you were using a unit, it would also include the unit, right? So if you said um, this row is distance in feet, you would include the unit feet in that row. Number three is there is no preference on what to choose as an upper or lower row. Basically, it means you can put either um, variable in the ratio on the top or the bottom, no matter, doesn't matter what order it is in, until you're writing your solution. If the ratio says something like um, feet to inches, then you want to make sure that your solution is in the order of feet to inches. But your table can be in any order that you prefer. Number four says the ratio between numbers in the columns is the same for all columns. That's pretty um, straightforward. Number five, the numbers in an empty column can be found by multiplying or dividing a completed column by the same factor. You might need a little refresher on what a factor is. Um, that is a number that can be multiplied by any other number. So if you have a column that says 2 and then 4 and then blank and then 8, right, the common factor would be 2. So you can increase by 2 multiplying or dividing. Lastly, completed columns. can be added or subtracted. So there's a lot of um, various scenarios that are characteristics of a ratio table. So it's really important to just um, be aware when you're filling out that kind of information that there's many ways um, that that can be done. Next up, I want to try a few of these tables. I want to see if we can complete a few of them. So the first example that we have says to find the cost of six pieces of candy if two pieces cost eight cents and if the price of the candy is the same no matter how many are sold. So if two pieces of candy cost eight cents, um, I want to make sure that that information is in my table. I also need to be sure that I label my tables, right? So the first row is the amount of candy, and the second row is the cost. So 
So now I want to expand upon my table, right? If two pieces of candy cost eight cents, four pieces of candy is going to cost 16 cents. And I know that because in order for me to get from 2 to 4, I multiply by 2. And in order for me to get from 8 to 16, again, I multiply by 2. If I want to increase again, I want to know how, what is the cost of 6 pieces of candy. So 6 pieces of candy, 2 times 3 will give me 6. So 8 times 3 would bring me to 24 cents. So again, the question says, um, find the cost of six pieces of candy. So I would say the cost of six pieces of candy is 24 cents. The next example says, um, if three boxes of cereal are sold for not six ninety, and a daycare provider needs seventeen boxes, how much will she pay? So again, I'm going to label my columns number of boxes compared to the cost. So this tells me three boxes cost six dollars and ninety cents. And I'm actually going to work backwards a little bit. Because if I know three boxes cost $6.90, I can say that one box costs $2.30. And the way I did that was I divided 3 by 3 to get 1. So if I divide $6.90 by 3, I get $2.30 for one box. Now I can help myself out and change over to 17 boxes, right? I'm going to go with 15 boxes because 3 is a multiple of 15. So 3 times 5 equals 15. So if I have $6.90 and I multiply that by 5, I get $34.50 for 15 boxes. 17 boxes, I'm going to add to that $34.50 the cost of two individual boxes, right? So $34.50 plus $2.30 for a 16th box plus $2.30 for a 17th box. That gives me a total cost of $39.10. So the question says how much will she pay? The daycare provider will pay $39.10 for 17 boxes of cereal. Don't forget to do your proof. It's a problem that says the width of my house is 30 feet. So how many inches is this? You're going to have to write yourself a ratio based on what you know about feet compared to inches and then use that ratio to um, build upon it and figure out how many inches are in 30 feet. Also, don't forget your reflection and to think about where you might use ratios um, in the world around you.